Hey guys, this is Marvin from MP Pixel Photography. In this video, I'll go over with you what I bring with me to a wedding and how I use it. This is going to be everything that I bring in my bag and how it helps me throughout my day. Welcome back. First, I'll let you know what cameras I use and how I use them throughout the day. I'm a Canon shooter. I use Canon cameras. I don't have anything against Nikon, Pentax or other uh, major brands that are out there. It's just that I just happened to come across Canon and that's the gear I use. So if you're not a Canon user, I'm not bashing any other uh, brand of gear. This is just uh, what I use and how I use it. Um, I take uh, two cameras with me, um, 5D Mark III and 5D Mark II. Uh, the 5D Mark III is my main camera that I use and the 5D Mark II, I use it as a backup. Um, I'm actually filming with my 5D Mark III right now, however, it has a battery grip on there that allows me to put two batteries in, which I consider very important, which is something I bring along with me. So I have lots of batteries with me uh, just in case. Uh, you never know whether you need to have your LCD screen on uh, very bright and that could run your battery down very quickly. Um, secondly, with my 5D Mark II that I take with me, I also have a battery grip on here and this uh, camera I also bring with two batteries on the inside and it uh, I, I bring it also with a SD card or rather CF card that is loaded and ready to go. Um, both cameras are time synced so if one fails I'll just grab the next one and I'll just keep shooting. I can't stress how important it is to have a backup because I've actually had to use my backup. So um, backup guys. Another thing I take with me uh, when it comes to lenses uh, is the must have uh, 70 to 200 f 2.8 with image stabilization. This is a must have for me. This is uh, one of the lenses that will stay on my camera at least for, I don't know, I'd say 60, 70% of the day. Um, I can actually go and shoot an entire wedding with this lens only and I'll be pretty pleased with the results. The reason I'm really pleased with this lens is the quality of out of focus regions that it gives or what you want to call it, bokeh or bokeh. Um, it's very good with this lens. Um, I do keep lens filters or I do keep a UV filter on each of my lens um, just because I want to protect it. Some people say it doesn't really protect it but I've dropped the lens before and the filter has cracked. Not that that saved the lens but it just shows me that some things on these lens are actually fragile. This one in particular it weighs a ton so um, yeah be careful with this lens. Um, however, um, it's well built. It's one of my favorite lenses. It has image stabilization. I always take a hood with me or use a hood when I'm using this, this lens and um, it stays on my camera most of the time. Canon L series lens f2.8 with image stabilization 70 to 200. And when I shoot with this lens, I mainly shoot between, I'd have to say 150 to the 200 millimeter focal length. Most times it's at 200 because I want to get that compression and that compression really gives me the look I want for my style of shooting. So get this one. Another lens I use is there we go my 50 millimeter 50 millimeter. This is the Canon version. It's the f 1.2 L series lens. I keep this on my camera just when I'm getting the bride uh, uh, before shots when she's getting ready, doing her makeup, uh, putting on her dress. This is the lens that I go to and the reason I use it is because you can stop it down all the way to f 1.2 which is amazing. I can't say I constantly shoot at f 1.2 but when I do need to isolate uh, specific details, I'll actually use this lens. It's a very uh, versatile lens. And if this is the only lens that I have, I would actually be happy shooting a wedding entirely with just this lens itself. Could um, 
this lens be substituted? Yes, I wouldn't uh, say you have to have this one. You could use the 1.4. 1.4 is quite capable, especially if um, you're not planning on using 1.2. I would say the 1.4 or uh, even the 1.8. I can't say I'm recommending the 1.8. However, it is the best value. This lens is almost, I'd say, 18 times, 15 times the price of the 1.8. So nothing beats the 1.8, which I do keep. Um, I never throw this thing away. I totally love this thing. And if for some reason this lens breaks and I have this lens, which is the cheaper version, which is about $100, I'd have no problem putting this lens on my camera and shooting with it as a backup. So as I get, again, I stress, backup is always great to have. And this is my nifty 50. So um, apart from that backup, the 1.2 lens. So between these two lenses right here, I also have a hood for this one, which is somewhere around here. I wasn't using it today. But between these two lenses that I have here, the 50 millimeter f1.2 and the 70 to 200 f 2.8 with image stabilization is pretty much what I use throughout the entire day. Do I need additional lenses or w even if I had additional lenses, would I have used them? Yes, but in a day when it's packed and you have no time to, to be switching around, especially if you're shooting by yourself, um, there's no time to be switching around these two lenses can pretty much get the job done. Another lens that's a specialty lens, which I did use today, but only for a few shots, uh, is this macro lens. This is the Canon 100mm macro lens that stops down to f2.8. This also has image stabilization. It's a pretty sharp lens. And if for some reason my 70 to 200 failed, I could easily pick this one up and shoot with this one and I wouldn't actually be missing much. The sharpness on this lens is ridiculous. Sometimes it may not be a good thing, but I can work around the sharpness and get great pictures. This also has image stabilization, which means that if you have to shoot in lower light conditions, this is a great lens to have. I do have a lens filter again. Um, installed on here. The one in this one is not a Primo lens filter, it's Rocket Fish. It uses a 67 millimeter filter thread size and this is also a great lens to have. I use it for my ring shots where you can get really close and it shows up really nice and bright in your uh, in your pictures and you can get the rings to fill the entire screen. Today I use it for about let's say 10, 10 or 15 shots just trying to get that ring shot out. So that's the Canon 100mm Macro L f2.8 with image stabilization. Another lens I brought with me, which I did not use today, is my 70 or 24 to 70 f2.8 lens, um, which is currently on the camera right now that I'm filming with. But did I use this lens today? No. Would I, would I have used this lens today at all? Not really. Um, it's a very capable lens. Uh, it's really sharp. It stops down to uh, all the way down to f2.8, which is pretty nice. The colors are great on there. It's a versatile lens moving from 24 to 70 in focal length. It's well built. I have nothing bad to say about that lens. However, it's just not my go-to lens for everything. It's a more casual lens for me. Um, as a matter of fact, when I do have an assistant shooting with me, uh, that's the lens I actually have her use with um, my 5D Mark II. And when we're both shooting, I bring a third camera as a backup. As again, I stress, you cannot have uh, uh, no backup. You can't not have a backup. So back up, back up, back up. Um, when it comes to memory cards, um, let's see here. When it comes to memory cards, I do, it's somewhere around here. I do, I do travel with lots and lots and lots of memory cards. Um, all my memory cards are 16 gigabytes 
I can't uh, definitely recommend a brand. I would say SanDisk. I do shoot with SanDisk cards as well as Transcend cards, which are a little bit cheaper. Um, but I do shoot with them as well. It's always uh, great to have a lot of cards. That way, if for some reason you have to keep shooting to make sure you get that shot, you won't run out of space. Uh, today, I only used up uh, two of my cards, uh, two 16 gigabyte cards on uh, today's shoot. Um, only lasted a few, a few hours, so that's not too bad. But I've been in a wedding before where I've used up to five of those cards. Yes, that's five times 16 gigabytes. I've used them all, and um, I really don't see where I put that, that bag with all my memory cards. Here it is. I keep them in this little, this little pouch that I got. This pouch actually came with a battery grip. It's a pouch to keep the battery grip in there. And I just uh, dip all my cards in there. So I've got the 16 gigabyte and this is a 600X speed card. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, have about eight cards. And uh, this is the uh, SanDisk Extreme, which is gives you speeds, uh, UDMA speed of 60 megabytes per second, which is pretty good. Do I need that kind of speed? Not necessarily. But it's good to have that if you're put in that situation where you need quick bursts to get that shot. You can use these cards and you'll be fine. Another thing is the 5D Mark III actually has two memory card slots. So what I'm really, really glad that I do is I keep two cards in there, an SD card and also keep the CF card in there. The SD cards that I use are also SanDisk. Um, however, those ones were a little bit cheaper, so I was able to get the fastest card and uh, larger cards themselves. Um, this is a Pelican case that I'm using here. It's a hard waterproof case, and this is my SanDisk card. This is a 32 gigabyte card, and it's a class 10, and it's the SanDisk Extreme Pro, so you get 95 megabytes per second transfer on here, so this is pretty good. Uh, if you want to do video or anything, but uh, I record um, all my pictures in RAW. Today I had kept the a single SD card, 32 gigabyte SD card in, and my CF cards, which are 16 gigabytes, actually had to swap out. But when I'm transferring my pictures to my computer, all I did was pull out this, six, this 32 uh, gigabyte SanDisk card and just transferred all the pictures to my computer as soon as I got home and I tend not to erase the images from these cards before I deliver them to the client so I keep these with the pictures on there until I deliver them to the client and when I do back them up on my computer I put them on two separate hard drives just in case you never want to have your pictures somehow get corrupted and you have no way of recovering them so this is a good thing to do the 5D Mark II, however, um, only has one card slot. So um, what can you do when it comes to shooting with the 5D Mark II and backing up? I would say or recommend if you're in a situation where you feel the need that you have to constantly back up, back up, back up. I'd say get smaller cards, maybe 8 gigabyte cards, and use multiple cards because the likeliness of multiple cards failing is a lot less than a single card failing. Would I recommend getting a 128 gigabyte card? Sure, if you can afford it and you can trust that card enough, go ahead. But I just feel uncomfortable putting an entire day's work on one single card if that was the only uh, card that you could load in that camera. And if something goes wrong, all your images are gone, which I can't have happening. So I think 16 gigabytes uh, is, is about fair enough for me to use in my camera the 5D Mark III, which fits about, I'd say, 300 to 400 pictures uh, per card. Um, last and not least, another thing, well, not last, I bring with me is a Speedlight. Uh, this is the Canon 580EX2. I do bring this along with me. I kept it on my camera today, not for the entire day, but because 
it was an outside wedding. I, I um, t took it off my camera until we got to the reception. However, this is very helpful to give you that extra burst of light when you need it. Um, so the business cards, I mean, really important, you know, just have them with you always, just in case. So uh, that's about it. What else uh, do I have in here? Um, I have these uh, quick straps that I keep my camera on. These quick straps, it's, uh, this one is for a single camera. Um, do I ever shoot with both cameras at the same time? I did that once before, but I can't say it was the easiest thing to do. These cameras are super heavy, super heavy. The two cameras I had was my Mark, Mark. As a matter of fact, at that time, I didn't even have a Mark III. I had two 5D Mark IIs, and I had two of these straps. I had a 70 to 200 on one, and the 50 millimeter on the other, and I can tell you, it was very heavy. I was sweating like a pig, and anyway, um, Rapid straps, they're very comfortable. Get rid of your Canon strap um, that goes around your neck. Uh, that really hurts and it's very difficult to keep it on all day long. And um, batteries, batteries, batteries for my speed light. Lots and lots of batteries. Yeah, why don't I use the AnyLoop batteries? I just don't. I have Duracell batteries that I buy or the Pro Cell, which I buy, and they're just ready to go. I don't recharge them or anything. I just use them when I'm done. I throw them out. Um, but will I ever get the end loop? Yes, I actually have some on order, which I'll be reviewing in another video. But for now, I use these. What else do I have? Um, and that's about it. And basically, that's all I brought with me today on today's shoot, and that's how I use it. So. Uh, if you have any other pointers of what I could do to, I don't know, improve as a photographer, um, go ahead, let me know in the comments below. Uh, subscribe where the, wherever the button is now, and uh, thanks for watching my video. Again, this is Marvin with MP Pixel Photography. You can check my website out uh, in the link below, um, in the description, www.mppixel.com, or you can check me out on Facebook. Uh, thanks again for watching my video and peace.